Greetings, my name is Dr. Magoha, and today we'll be discussing Spina Bifida Cystica. Spina Bifida, meaning split spine, is a birth defect or congenital malformation that occurs when the spine and spinal cord don't form properly in utero. It is a defect of the neural tube, which is an embryonic structure that develops into the spinal cord and brain. Neural tube defects have a range of presentations, from stillbirths to incidental radiographic findings of spina bifida occulta, and to more overt forms of presentation like spina bifida cystica and rachischesis. The cystic split spinal cord is classified according to the contents of the sac. For example, it is a meningocele when it is only cerebrospinal fluid, myelomeningocele when there are neural elements within the sac, and lipomyelomeningocele when there are both fat and neural elements within the sac. Spina bifida develops during the first 16 days of pregnancy, often when the mother may not even know that she is pregnant. This happens during the process of primary neurulation, where the embryo starts to develop its nervous system. Failure of closure of the neural tube results in a neural tube defect. The incomplete closure of the dorsal spinal structures, which usually happens between the 17th to the 30th post-conception day, is what happens. So what causes this? The causes of these congenital malformations are multifactorial, with a complex interplay of maternal and environmental factors during the first trimester of pregnancy. However, folic acid deficiency in pregnancy is a significant predisposing factor in the development of neural tube defects, an important point for preconception mothers. So how does this present? Aside from the obvious mass which may emanate from the cervical, thoracic, or lumbar region, there may be different degrees of paralysis as the nerves end in the placode and not in the effector muscles or organs. This also results in a loss of sensation below the lesion. Hydrocephalus is commonly seen in spina bifida patients. Other associated pathologies include postural anomalies like clubfoot or congenital hip dislocation. Examination might also reveal spasticity and hyperreflexia. So how do we investigate for this? Spina bifida may be detected antenatally during the fetal anomaly ultrasound scan at about 18 to 20 weeks of gestation. Amniocentesis can help confirm the presence of an open neural tube defect, which will be marked by elevated alpha fetal protein in the amniotic fluid. After birth or postnatally, an MRI of the brain along with regular follow-up are useful to rule out hydrocephalus. An initial urinalysis, urine culture, and serum urea, nitrogen, and creatinine test at birth are used to evaluate the renal function in neonates with spina bifida. A regular renal assessment is vital as urosepsis is a common cause of death in long-term survivors, especially in those with signs of vesicourethric reflux. So how do we treat this? Spina bifida patients require extensive, active, interdisciplinary treatment from a coordinated team of pediatricians, neurosurgeons, nephrologists, nursing staff, and social support staff. Following neonatal neurosurgery to repair the neural placode, the head size and condition of the child are monitored for potential development of hydrocephalus. We then do sphincter evaluation and we 
progress towards an appropriate bowel and bladder regimen with a lot of focus on closed intermittent catheterization. Prevention is better than cure, especially if you're thinking of getting pregnant, consult an obstetrician and start taking folic acid supplementation prior to the pregnancy. If you or anyone you know are suffering from spina bifida, or if you know any caregivers taking care of people with spina bifida, you should try to contact the Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Association of Kenya. They have very many useful resources as you should never go through any of this alone. Thank you for your attention and have a blessed day.